The New York Jets have to be the worst run organization in the entire NFL right now. This article that came out from The Athletic had 30, not one, not two, not a few anonymous wink, wink, nod sources, 30 sources from inside the organization leading with quotes from this article from these anonymous sources saying it is a total fucking mess and things have to change. One coach says that Nat Hackett is an ill-equipped offensive coordinator and Robert Sala is an, is an excuse-making paranoid head coach and that Aaron Rodgers is rubbing teammates the wrong way. Another source stating that Nathaniel Hackett, the offensive coordinator, and Aaron Rodgers' relationship is that of frat bros and that Aaron Rodgers gets free will on the offense and that's why he was brought into the organization. When Aaron Rodgers came to the Jets, if you remember, they hired Nathaniel Hackett, his guy that he said he could have a beer with to be his offensive coordinator, and other rookie and young players from the Packers that he just wanted on the team. And Aaron Rodgers has come out and denied that he demanded those people to be there, but he did say he made strong recommendations. But clearly the way he recommended it sounded like it was probably more of a demand because they brought these guys in and they've been basically worthless. And they were there only on Aaron Rodgers' behalf. More quotes. One coach that recently joined the program said that the lack of urgency on the offensive side of the ball is concerning, and he had never seen an NFL team watch so little film in training camp. Also saying that Nathaniel Hackett can't make adjustments. In the game against the Cowboys, Dwayne Brown needed help blocking Micah Parsons, but no adjustments were made, and the Cowboys continued to dominate on the defensive side of the ball, especially Micah Parsons, and beat the Jets 30 to 10. Since this has come out, uh, Robert Sala says that he is now going to be overseeing the offense. So clearly there is no trust there with, with Nathaniel Hackett anymore. And the craziest thing about this is with all these people that Aaron Rodgers has brought in to be part of this organization, I want to kind of put it into a comparison as like, let's pretend that you are the owner of a Walmart and a general manager is coming from Best Buy. He's never worked in a grocery store before. He's never worked in Walmart before, but he's extremely overqualified for the job as a general manager. So let's say he has a double major. He's been considered one of the most successful Best Buy managers in his region. And he's even won a couple of awards saying that he is like one of the top guys at his position working for Best Buy. But the problem is, bro, you've never done that here. So imagine you interview the guy from Best Buy and he comes in and he's like, OK, I get to pick everyone that I hire as the supervisors on the floor. I get to hire everyone that's going to be the at the check stands and I'm going to run everything my way. And I get final say on how things go on the floor. But he's never been there before. He's only done this at Best Buy. Are you going to give him the job? Are you going to say, yes, you can do that and then pay him handsomely in the process as well? If you're if you're an owner of a store. You're going to tell that guy to go fuck himself. You are. Or are you going to say, no, you can come here and you can work for a couple of years and show me that you're a trustworthy employee at this business because you haven't worked in Walmart in Walmart before. You can show me that you can do it here and then we'll talk more about the things that you, we can give you power with in the future. But you can't just come into an organization just because you won just because you won some MVPs and, you know, you're one of the top quarterbacks in the league, but pretend like you should have full control over the offense. Essentially, you have not earned that right especially coming to a new, a new organization. Maybe that flies in Green Bay. That's not going to fly in New York. Oh my gosh, here's another quote. Behind closed doors, the vibes weren't always positive, especially with Sala. He would see negative press reports about the Jets, and he would often bring up in his mind that the Giants don't get nearly as much negative coverage as the Jets, calling it unfair. Give me a fucking break. It gets worse. In the aftermath of Rogers' injury, Robert Sala bemoaned his bad luck. He often wondered aloud to other people if he was just doomed to the same fate as Vic Vangio, a brilliant defensive coach cursed by misfortune by misfortune at quarterback, which F Fangio was fired by the Broncos in 2021. As the Jets lost more and more games and struggled to score points, job security seemed to be a Robert Sala's primary concern and he wished Johnson or Rogers would publicly endorse him for 2024. No, if, if your thought process is like, oh, poor me, this is bad luck. 
what are we going to do? Of course, your team's going to lose games. You can't, maybe you can do that silently in your own head behind closed doors by yourself. But if you're doing that openly in the organization, that puts out a bad vibe. And I'm no coaching genius, but you say shit like that to your team, it's not going to go well. You're not going to win a whole lot of games. Going deeper, and as we all remember, when Wilson got benched for Boyle, another, again, Boyle is another guy that Aaron Rodgers wanted to come in who was just terrible at quarterback. Uh, Wilson got benched for Boyle, and in the days before the Falcons game, Sala reversed his course and told Wilson to start practicing as if he was going to play again. And Wilson said no. Go fuck yourself. I don't want to play. How dare you bench me when you put me in in these bum situations with these terrible game plans and blame it all on me. Wilson, knowing they were considering starting him again, uh, said he would politely decline if asked based on his previous conversations and fears getting injured behind the Jets' makeshift offensive line. Salah then asked Rodgers to speak with Wilson to convince him to start playing again. That didn't work either, and Zach Wilson's feelings about his idol soured over the season. I mean, it just gets worse and worse. And then a while back, Aaron Rodgers went on the Pat McAfee show when a bunch of things were being leaked out of the organization and says, that's the problem with the organization. We need to get to the bottom of whatever this is and who it's coming from and put a stop to it privately because there's no place for this in a winning culture, and this isn't the only time. There's been a bunch of other leaks. Oh, it, this is like this is like the real housewives of the New York Jets. So if you're a Jets fan, I'm sorry. I don't know what you can do moving forward with this. I think it's a big disaster. At bare minimum, the Jets do have to move on from their coaching staff. That's bare minimum. If they run it back with what they got, it's going to be a disaster. I promise you. I don't care who they sign, how much film they watch, how much they practice. If they try to get the offensive line better. This team's going to be an absolute fucking disaster with this coaching staff, and they have to move on. Moving to the NBA for a second, this really pissed me off. Something really cool is happening. I actually love this. Steph Curry is going to compete with Sabrina. I cannot pronounce her last name. I apologize. Lonesco or Ionesco or Ionescu. Can't pronounce it. My bad. She's considered the best female shooter in the WNBA right now. And the NBA agreed that Steph Curry and Sabrina will be going head-to-head -head for the first NBA versus WNBA three-point challenge. I was super excited about this. And I watched her shoot. If you have not seen her shoot yet, watch her shoot. She is a lights-out shooter. Unreal, great shooter, crazy talent. So I'm all excited, right? I'm like rubbing my hands together. I'm like, yes, let's get some man versus woman action here. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Let's get some, let's get some NBA versus WNBA action here. I can't wait to see this competition. But then the NBA puts out the format of how they're going to do this competition. So it's basically the same, the same layout, right? Four racks, four game balls, one money ball. Fifth rack will be a special all money ball rack. Thing. And Steph will shoot with an NBA basketball from his NBA line. And Sabrina will shoot from the WNBA line with WNBA basketballs. And just like that, they totally shit on this whole thing. And now I don't even fucking care. This pisses me off because when it comes to something like this, you don't have to give that much of an advantage to the women. They can compete. You don't have to change it that much. Women should be shooting the women's basketball. Men should be shooting the men's. That's what you practice with your entire life. That shouldn't change. That's plenty of enough of an advantage for the women. What should happen is Sabrina should be shooting from the NBA line or, in my opinion, the better option, Steph should be shooting from the WNBA line. But she uses the women's ball and he uses the men's ball. And they just compete head to head like that. Because she's a good enough shooter to compete with him just in that format. You don't have to back Steph up to the regular NBA line. And to be honest, if I had to pick, I think Sabrina's going to win this. But it's not the same. If Steph were to move up to the WNBA line, this would be much closer. This would be a toss up. And that's bullshit. It shouldn't have to like, why are we look, it's not a fight. They're not playing one on one. They're not playing, you know, football. It's just shooting a basketball. They don't need to be that much closer when it comes to this specific format of a competition. And I think the NBA ruined this. Imagine how much more people would have watched this if they were shooting from the same distance. 
I think the NBA blew it on this. And I do want the WNBA to do better. I do think there's talented women that can play basketball. But when you do shit like this, it just ruins it. As you're basically saying that the women need that much of an advantage to compete. So the NBA blew it on this. And people aren't going to watch All-Star Weekend anyways. The NBA is slowly, very slowly dying right now, unfortunately. With all the 70-point games, the lack of defense, stars sitting out, people don't want to buy tickets. Like there's even been, I'm not going to lie, there has even been scenarios where I wanted to buy tickets to an NBA game. And every time I'm like about to buy a ticket, I always get that thought in the back of my head. Like, what if I buy this ticket and the star that I'm coming to see just decides not to play? Like, I can't even imagine the frustration of that. And there's absolutely been times that that has stopped me from buying a ticket. And the players are saying... You know, we put so much emphasis on winning championships and it means so much that they all want to try to just reserve their bodies until the end of the season. And I get that. The only fix I can see for the NBA is to try to just have less games. But I know they would never do that because it's probably going to cost everyone money. And God knows if you have to give up a little bit of money, that's like the fucking worst thing you can do. You can't give up a million dollars when you're making 40 million a year. I can't make 39 million. I can't do it. That's just out of the question. So I don't know what the fix is then. Because either you're playing too many games and guys can't stay healthy or or everyone's a bunch of sissies and they just, you know, can't handle it when they have to play their whole fucking contract out. I don't know what they're going to do when LeBron and Steph retire. I feel like a lot of the people that still watch are watching for those guys in, in particular. So I'm not sure what the move is. I wish they would play less games. I wish they would do like a March Madness tournament, a one and done tournament at some point that really means something. Let's pretend. What if you cut the season down, you get rid of the Eastern and the Western Conference, and you say everybody plays everybody twice. That's it. Everybody plays everybody twice, no back-to-backs. And then at the end of those seasons in those records you place them in a march madness tournament and the seating is based on your record on who you play you go through a march madness tournament and then the final to the final four you get to the final four and then those teams play seven game series to the end so the final four play against each other based on seating seven game series to decide the championship from there i don't know I'm just saying something like that would totally change the league. I know that changes the history of the game. It kind of messes up the record books. But if you want the NBA to continue to be great, you need to have more one and done scenarios and you need to have less games. So every game means more because teams are willing to lose games because it seems like in the regular season, as long as you can make it in the play in and everyone's playing a seven game series, it really doesn't matter that much. You could be the eight or the nine seed and still win a championship as long as you just get in the playoffs as it sits right now it doesn't fucking matter therefore they're not going to care about the regular season that's just the changes i would like to see let me know what you guys think if you've made it to this point in the video please consider subscribing it is the best way to support my page and my content it is 100 percent free i appreciate every single person that watches i'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers and real quick i'm thinking about doing a live show maybe like twice a week in the morning. I know I'm competing with all the other TV channels, but I think I can maybe put something together that can be entertaining as a morning sports show on your way to work. Let me know what you guys think. Should I try to do a live show? I probably set something up in here so it looks you know, more like a live show professional setting. Let me know. Thank you guys. I appreciate every single person that watches my content. I'm having the time of my life. Thank you. And I'll see you guys in the next one.